I say Mark now. <laughs> Why did you say Mark to begin with? So the camera, the, so that this has got audio to pick up from the for the computer. Okay. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the first podcast. Wait a minute. Stop that. What are we calling this? I don't know what table we're going talk. to tell it. It might be table talk. It might be let's talk about it. I don't know. We ain't really come up with what we're going to call it yet. So so for now, we're going to roll with table talk with the hillbillies. Listen at her. She's trying to whisper. She's afraid of these mics. Y'all, my voice is obnoxious, and it's probably even worse. Almost. Y'all are going to get a firsthand experience <laughs> of what I experience on a daily basis here. This is the first time I, I, you know, I've seen a few of our own vlogs, and I'm like, wow, Megan, tone it down. But this, this is a, uh, mm-hmm, I can hear nothing but me. I can already tell I'm going to have to get her a pop filter because she really makes her. <laughs> By the way, guys, the niece is over here hiding in the corner. She's sitting in this round with us. Okay, let's get started. I thought we'd done and got started. It is the month of October, and as we promised, we're going to dive into some Appalachian folklore. I don't know if you really call it folklore or true stories or stories that just circulate the Appalachian Mountains. And here, I think some of it's probably scare tactics. You know, that boogeyman don't go outside for the kids tactics. It's, um, you know how it is when you you don't want your kids venturing outside in the dark because, you know, there's bears and, well, you know, coyotes out there. So you're like, hey, there's something out there. Don't talk about it, but it's out there. Nobody wants their children out after dark. I don't even want to be out during dark. Like the other night, I come in, I told Megan, I had a bunch of boxes to burn. And I was like, well, it's cold out. I don't want to be out there. And no, in actuality, what it was, I was walking up and I got right to the shed before I get to the burn barrel. And it was like there was light and then there was no light. And then I got cold chills and then the hair stood up on the back of my neck. And then the next thing you know, here I am. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going up there. This is what we don't talk about. Sean has always been, how do I say this? I block, a lo- I'm very aware that there are other things. I just, I don't like to give life to it. I guess you could say I'm a scaredy cat or I just feel like if I acknowledge these things, they become more prominent in my life. And I, I don't appreciate that. And my thing is, I, th- I seem like I'm an antenna. Like, I, I sense things. I, I see things for what they are. It's like, I've got an annoying gift that drives her crazy. It's just the fact that I can see the way ta- things play out. Like, I, I nail it 90% of the time. Here's how we say it. I'm the realist. Sean's the dreamer. And that, that also falls in the category is he kind of does mark things as they play out. And they usually work out that way. And I'm more of the realist. No, that's never going to happen. Yeah. It's proof that truth is stranger than fiction because what I lay out usually is like, you're like, what? Yeah. No way. And then it plays out the way I say it and everybody's looking at me like. Let's back up and talk about my experience I had after I had our daughter. We, I had been home from the hospital maybe, what, four or five days. The routine I had at the time, I would put Colton to bed so I could stay up later with her just an hour or two and bond with her and spend that alone time with her as a baby. You know me. I can't go to bed with dirty dishes. That house had a huge kitchen window and nothing behind that house. It, it, it was a cliff. It was that a was cliff it. with hillside and a few trees on it, but there was absolutely nothing back there. But, you know, I'd been doing dishes in that when looking out that window for two years and nothing. I got up and laid her down that night and came back downstairs and decided to do the dishes because, you know, I have OCD and it irks me. So I'm sitting there doing the dishes and something just tells me, look up. I just feel, you know, this is like 1230 at night look up as crazy as this sounds it still I think I only ever told you mom my sister and my niece about this but I look up and hanging off the edge of that cliff with two big long pale arms wrapped around these two trees this long pale face and these big eyes and I'm going Sean 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 come here come here I think what she was seeing that night, because I got the flashlight this night, and I shined it. She's like, it's right there. And I was like, there's nothing there. And I was like, it's, she's like, it's right there. And I shined the flashlight. And as soon as I shined the she's like, where'd it go? But then I turned the flashlight off, so, and she's seen it again. So I think what well, sometimes your mind will play tricks on you. I absolutely and you'll agree. you'll see shadows, and it's just the light. And your mind wants to make a... a something out of it that it knows so if you see something it's like in the clouds or in the shadows or something you'll see a face but it's just 
the shadow and the way it's going. So let's fast forward. Now, like I said, this thing had a long, pale face, big, deep, dark eyes. It, it was enough. I don't scare easily. That scared me. Like I was calling for my husband to come rescue me. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, that's so corny. That was very corny. But let's fast forward to a couple of nights later. Same thing happened. Now, didn't see it the night after. The night after, it was a few days later. Remember me calling for you again to come and see if you were seeing what I was seeing. And I saw nothing. Maybe you just weren't seeing it. Like all the times that you've seen that I'm like, no, Sean, you feel that? And I'm like, no, there's nothing here. I believe whatever that was, you know, a lot of people like to say skinwalkers, spirits, wendigos. I'm just going to roll with demon. But I don't know. Since, like, I was little, it was always, like, my granny, I would come in and I would say I would have a weird feeling. And when I'd come in the house, she'd be like, no, don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. We don't say its name. And I'm like, what's its name? And she said, we don't say it. And I'm like. The thing. They didn't even call it a thing. We just said it was literally known as the thing we don't talk about. That's all I ever remember hearing them, like, don't say its name, don't talk about it. And then Mamaw would grab, like, this little whiskey broom thing. I don't know. It was like... The cinnamon know, this, brooms? Yeah, the cinnamon brooms. And she would break that thing out anytime I would, like, talk about it. And she would, like, sweep the door way away when I come in and was, like... Oh, rolling back to the Appalachian folklore. The like, cinnamon broom. Y'all, the superstitions I heard when I was growing up was just completely insane. I still try to, you know, make heads or tails out of some of these, and I don't even get it. I don't understand, like, what are they even talking about? I don't even think the people that talk about it now know what they're talking about. I think it's been lost to the point. They just don't talk about it no more. No, I think it absolutely existed. What I think it is, it's just different experiences for different people. Like I said, with mine, going back to some people call it a wendigo, some people call it a skinwalker, some people call it a demon. When you get into the cryptids, the wendigo and the dogman are two separate things all together, and then, you know, Bigfoot is, you know, a Yeti, Sasquatch. Like, all these things are, are different, so, or are they the same? Is it something that can shape shift and different things and make you think it's something else? Like, I don't know. Like, it's, Bingo. I it's think you... the world of cryptids. Well, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there because everybody has a name for what they consider dark and not a good presence. You can feel it around you. Just like when I was doing the dishes that night, my instincts was telling me to look up. And even though you didn't see what I seen, I believe that specific thing was there for me to see it that night. Well, my thing is I never really visually see anything. Mine, I'm more... I feel something, and I don't, you know, it could be me, you know, and my mind playing tricks on me, or I, I literally could be feeling something. I don't know. It's just I know sometimes I'll be sitting around, and I'm like, even in the house, I'll be sitting around, I get this cold chill, and I, I instantly start looking over my shoulder like, what is that? Yeah. Yeah. See, I think I'm more visual because I almost refuse to give energy to anything like that. Speaking of that, you remember when somebody sent us the ghost box and we were using it in that old place we lived down here in that trailer? Yeah, I don't like that house. Well, Sean asked it, said, what can we do to help you? And it, it came back and said, Megan, block. That's why I said, I think my energy field has blocked all of this stuff. I may visually see it, but you're not connecting to my energy at all. My energy is going to be protected. Now, here's what's crazy. That house she's talking about, you know, where we was using that ghost box, that's right beside of our shop. Mm -hmm. And the other day I was down there, and I walked outside to call Megan or something, and I was sitting in the truck, and I hear Jeremiah was going to work. His dog, he kennels him up just like we do. All of a sudden, I hear thump, 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 thump. Somebody walking out of the bedroom, and it stopped. And then just like a couple seconds later, it was like thump, 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 boom. Like something fell in there. But the dog was up. I even asked Jeremiah. I messaged him. I was like, is Chewy up? And he's like, yeah. And I said, check. And he sent me a screenshot of, you know, he's got cameras in his house. And he sent me a screenshot of Chewy in the kennel. But whatever this was went from one end of that house to the middle and then back. And then it sounded like it fell down. Crazy. There's like that house. I don't like that house. That's why I was like... 
hell bent on moving out of that place. Let's not forget that's also the very house we well you recorded the sound that went viral and mm-hmm. everybody thinks it was a Bigfoot or some still say mountain lion. We're still not sure to this day what that sound was. I don't think anybody is, but it was pretty it's pretty horrifying to hear. Well, it's like from what I've gathered by some people I've talked to locally, they said the, a Civil War battle had happened right in this very area right here that one side come up and the other and, like, massacred them in their sleep and in their camps and stuff, and they said it was supposed to happen through here. Now, that's neither here or there. You know how these little local legends go, but all I know for sure is just on maybe about a 50-acre radius in that area, things happen. Yeah. Now, you can go outside of it, and there's nothing. But you stay in that, like, just this small area, all these events happen. You know, there's places that you'd be walking, and all of a sudden it feels like you're somewhere else. The birds stop making noise. No crickets, no winds, no nothing. Just dead silence, eerie feelings, weird smells. And it's all just in this one spot. Now, see, that is the truth. Many times me and Sean have been on the four-wheeler and just stop to, you know, hang out in a pretty spot. And out of nowhere, everything stops. The birds, I mean, it's just like the wind is even so still. I was talking to this girl when we posted on, I think it was Facebook, I guess. Is that where we posted we were doing the podcast? I posted on pretty much everything. Well, okay. Well, she had messaged me through Facebook, and she's from Virginia. And she said, hey, I seen you guys are doing that. She said, I want to tell you something. I lived, she lived in sort of like a, it's a holler to us, but she called it more of like a village, more like a a suburban village back in the mountains. You know what I mean? It's a lot of it's her family, but it it's more. All right, it's scratch. a community. It's a community. There you go. But they're still, they do things really old school yeah. still. And uh, she said that they were, when they were younger, they were all outside her and her cousins playing at night. Her cousin kept saying, there's something in the trees. There's some, a tall man, tall, skinny man in the trees. And she was like, what? Well, they all ran in the house and told their mom what they had seen. And her mom kind of got upset. She was like, listen, you never make eye contact with that thing. You never say its name. Well, she said that made her, and her mom that told her said, you guys need to be in after dark from now on. Well, her grandma she was kind of telling her grandma what happened. Her grandma was like, listen, the elders, which is, I guess, her parents, mm-hmm. her parents' parents, had said this thing is like a skinwalker. Like it mimics the sound of kids, animals. It will say your name to try to tempt you to look at it. They consider it to be more, I consider, I say evil spirit. Yeah. But they say skinwalker. But she said uh, that to this day that she is terrified to go outside at night. And to this day, her little cousin said that she still cannot get the image of what she seen out of her mind that night in the woods. And the tall, skinny figure to me kind of reminds me of what do they call him? Slender man? Yeah. Evil spirit, either way you look at it to me. Well, it's like when I was little, I... I've got a picture burning in my head. I used to have, you know, the regular Polaroid, Polaroid camera. Everybody had one. And I would just take and snap random pictures. But one day I took a picture of the hillside and standing between two trees. Now, it could have been an optical illusion, but there was a thing. I don't know what it is. It's still burnt in my head. I wish I knew where the picture was this day so I could look at it with my adult mind because I was probably seven, eight year old when I took this picture. So... I have it in my head, and it still freaks me out in my head, but I would like to see it with my adult mind. But it was literally a thing, you know, and I, I remember snapping the picture, and you know how you had to shake the Polaroid, mm-hmm. and I sat there, and I seen it, and I was like. Yeah, we had to blow on them. I was like, oh, my goodness. But then I like I took the Polaroid down, and nothing was there, but I looked at it again, and it was clearly like a figure in between these two trees. But I, like, look at the picture again, and then look, and there's nothing there, and I'm like, okay. But that's like I've that's something I've carried with me since that day, and it, it still freaks me out to sit there and just think about that and think, you know, it what was is right that? There, you know, you it, didn't even know it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, t- going back to pictures, when we well, you 
because you were the one that outside, out, was outside and caught it, the sound. But remember, we had took pictures back there, and people were screenshotting our pictures and blowing them up, and were sending us all these images. There was a lot of black chick figures. You black. just said black. <laughs> 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 It was it was tons of black figures like everywhere was just like right. shadows. <laughs> black Chick figures. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, catch our breath and start. <laughs> right. But yeah, it was just like tons of black figures. Every picture they were sending us, it was like something leaning out behind a tree. Don't you remember? The, when you were talking about the Civil War, there was a few, it looked like men oh, yeah, in like suit. This. The one girl had seen us. She kept putting it in the comments of those pictures. She's like, look at this. I mean, she was good. Like, she was blowing these pictures up and finding these things. Well, and that I was one like, looked like a woman in a dress it that did. she sent us. And then a couple she sent us looked like little kids, two little kids standing side by side. And Oh, whatever. I have not seen her comment, but, you know, we went a long time without doing them Bigfoot videos. Yeah, we did. Going back to whatever, it's the thing nobody says its name. This goes all the way back to the Indians, even though most of, I think they're more shifted out west now. The stories from out west in those tribes and over here in the Appalachian Mountains, they are pretty similar, and I'm going to go with Skinwalker. If you listen to the Indian stories and people out there, the farmers, the ranchers, and people, some of the older generation here, and some people our age have had experiences, but it kind of, to me, all goes back to these skinwalkers. It seems like there's like a bridge between the skinwalker and dogman because a lot of these same events happen and one person will say skinwalker, but I mean, we really don't know what this is. That's why I said to sum it up, you could probably say an evil spirit that's going to manifest in front of your eyes is whatever it wants you to see. Well, it'll be your fear, whatever pulls yeah. at you the most or whatever's going to pull you closer to it. That's what it's going to come as. You know, it's going to pique your curiosity. I mean, they don't say curiosity killed the cat for no reason. Right. I like to protect my energy now. You know, of of course, I love to protect my energy. I Once I became, you know, back in the day, of course, I was all about watching ancient aliens and all that stuff. You guys know how I was. But now, once I became a mother, it was like God was telling me, like, hey, now you have to protect your energy, your spirit, because you have two other souls you have to protect. So don't play with this stuff. Don't draw this stuff into your life, if anything, Protect your energy and keep it at a distance. Don't give it a name. Well, it's not to mention, like, since Colton's been born, I think once we moved back to Kentucky, I don't believe we've watched a horror movie. We haven't. Like, at all. I was thinking about that the other night. Somebody was asking me if I watched Halloween Ends yet, and I'm like, I, I've not watched any of those. Since kids has been born, I ain't had no desire. It's like I, I protect more of what goes in my eyes mm -hmm. than what I used to back in the day. Your eyes, old saying goes, are the window to your soul. Your ears as well. It, it, it affects everything that goes into you and comes back out. You know, maybe that's why they said we shouldn't talk about it. What, Might say its name. Say it's, I, Well, nobody knows its name. That's Don't even probably, think about it. <sighs> I'm serious. But yeah, after my kids were born, I think the reason I may have seen that thing that night is because I had just given birth. I was very sleep deprived and I was I was in a weakened state. He was low on blood. I was probably very low on blood, but I was in, you know, yeah, natural, yeah, birth. But anyhow, I was, you know, probably in a weakened state and very tired and a new mom to a second child now. I had one, two in diapers, but... I know what I've seen, and I'll never forget that. You know, sometimes I wonder, like, what was we thinking? To be the age we are and to have two toddlers back-to-back, -to -back, I'm like, listen, I'm going to be looking like Doctor Strange before long, you know, <laughs> not to break talk, but I have noticed, like, the gray is coming in heavy in a stripe around my side. You, Me and Sean both, you, I don't have to highlight my hair here because it all grows in gray. You can give me nothing for my children, but let me tell you. 
cute. They wear their mama out sometimes. I mean, 38 years old, I'm still, you know, still going good and everything, but they got triple the energy old mama's got. Hey, you know, we can talk about all the horror you want, but you don't get horror until you talk about two toddlers. One, all right, Colton's almost four now, but he's been riding this terrible two, terrible three thing out pretty good, and Chloe's been sitting there like a cowgirl going, yee-haw, riding it with him. But now that Colton's starting to kind of dive down off this and relax, here goes Chloe like, ha, watch me. You think hey, he was bad now, like she's going yep. insane. She is. She um, she might be a little spoiled, or she has watched her brother. Might be a little spoiled. Mike grows on a chicken rear. So. She's a little bit spoiled. She's a little dramatic, but I mean, look at her parents. We might be a little dramatic. Listen, I think you had the biggest hand in the dra- dra- dramatics yeah. of ever. Cause. Let the kids be the judge when they get older and see who was more dramatic. You right. You listen. You've had the biggest influence on both of them, Tootsie Roll. So <laughs> if they're both dramatic, it's come from mostly from you. Okay, we're getting way we're, off subject. Well, that's this when you was talking about a horror story. That's a horror story. Having two toddlers at the same time going. <laughs> it's the truth. It can be rough sometimes. It of can, course, it can. Definitely, your beard has definitely. He sprouted like. Oh God! Great. <laughs> right here. It's full. All right, I know this one was kind of a mess. We're just getting the hang of this. It's been so long since we actually sat down and talked to the camera, and we've never really talked to the mic, so this is something new. Little mama keeps going. It's always me getting it, Panning that auto. I've barely moved. Like, I know my distance. I know I have to keep it. You'll get used to it, but, you know. So will you, Buttercup, because you have rambled a good 15 minutes of this 28. Oh, we'll see once it's done. We'll see once we get the editing done, but we'll get the hang of it. At you least know. I did my homework. I set all this up. Yeah, all this it. you guys see. All this. <laughs> I, I set all this up. I did my homework on ordering the podcast machine so we got good audio and the mics and the lighting and, you know, dialing in all these angles and, you know, coating the walls of this. Rambling. And, yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, well, it's like I said, we haven't done this in a while. We'll get the hang of it. Uh, um, wait a minute. We've never done a podcast. This is our first. So you guys go lightly on us because this is our first time ever. We will get more experienced. We will learn to do more homework. We hope you guys enjoyed this podcast with us. Like I said, this is our first one. Go easy on us. We will get better. We will do better. And uh, Drop us in the comments down here. Topics you'd like to hear us talk about, you know, our take on things. and But you guys leave us some comments below and let us know what do you guys want to hear us talk about. Life experiences, what the weather, uh, chemtrail, it doesn't matter. Just Ooh, whatever. That wouldn't we'll have to be on Rumble. Oh, okay. We need to know what you guys want to hear, what you guys want to see us talk about. The best ones will be on Rumble. Stop I'm being bad. I'm about to explode. <laughs> Anywho. You got to keep it on the middle of the road around here. So, Guys, we love y'all. And until the next one, stay positive, stay country, and stay true to your roots. We'll see y'all on that mountainside. Peace.